who is part of the Switch It Up campaign. Today, we are joined by the lovely Sharon Brown. Um, Sharon experienced early menopause and she wants to share her story with um, other women so that they can understand some of the challenges that she faced and navigate their own way if they find themselves in the same position. So, hi Sharon, thank you so much for joining us. Hi Verity, thanks for having me. That's all right. So could you just tell us a little bit about your personal story and some of the challenges you faced? Well, initially I didn't realise that I was in early menopause. Um, it was only after um, being married and wanting to start a family, um, we suffered numerous amounts of miscarriages. And I was sent for IVF. We got one a chance of one round of IVF, so we went for it. And they informed me that I only had five eggs left. And this was when I was 36, I think it was. Oh um, so they pulled my funding for the IVF and they were only going to do it if my husband would um, donate his sperm. It's the only way we could afford it. Uh, but they pulled it out the bag right at the last moment as we were about to walk out the door and gave us the opportunity. When I discussed the level of eggs that we had with the doctor, they, were, they always told me on multiple occasions that the amount of eggs I had um, at that time would not affect early menopause. Because I always used to say to them, you know, could I be checked? Was there anything we could do? Was that um, a knock-on effect to the loss of pregnancies that we had? And they always said no, but there was ne never any checks done. Um, but when I came out the other side of the IVF, um, we ended up falling pregnant naturally later on and um how how that even happened is another story um, and how i managed to hold on to that pregnancy again um was a miracle in itself and we managed to have a little girl um off the back of that um i re i had her at 40 so yeah. that's how long it took us from wow. we, we started a family, we started trying for family at when I was 31, I was 40 by wow. the time I had a daughter. And she, when she came along, um, I had a couple of symptoms. I, I was fully aware by this point in terms of menopause, early menopause. My mum, just before she died last year, um, had notified us that she went through menopause at 36. Okay. She didn't tell us. Um, she didn't realise she had to, um, and it was me that notified my sister. She then was taken through it, and then my period started to tail off at 41. And I phoned the doctors and spoke to them, and it's basically been a fight to get diagnosed, a fight to get the right um, medication in terms of HRT, and needed to be on it with being so young because they gave me a choice. I either um, took HRT and their words were, I can take HRT and risk breast cancer, or I can not take HRT and risk osteoporosis, mm. which isn't the case in terms of HRT. That's actually not, that's not what you're choosing between, which has made me quite angry because I've just lost a cousin at 38 to breast cancer. Wow. Okay, so, so. Which then has a much even bigger effect. Um, so... Yes, we've been through a traumatic time in terms of getting that right, which still isn't. And no. the, worst, the worst time when I got in contact with you, obviously, was when um, on the 26th of April, I went back to the doctor and asked them to look at my medication, of which they changed it. And when the, within a matter of five days, I was, sorry, I was in quite a state yeah. and was actually um, suicidal. Yeah. I know, so, and that's so that's so so terrible, isn't it? I mean, what, why, why, how did that feel for you at that time? It was quite confusing. Um, I had um, when I was eighteen, I'd gone through depression for many, many years, so I knew it was it was in the, it's always in the background, and that never ever goes away, yeah. even though that's ne it's not been an issue for many, many, many years. And but this felt different. It didn't feel like a depression. It just, I, I don't know what it was. It, I just felt like that's it, I'm done. Right. I can't do this. But I knew 
it was the HRT, but that's the difference. I knew it wasn't me. It was a yeah. completely different feeling. I knew it wasn't me. I knew it was the HRT and I knew even, you know, if they just put me back onto whatever I was on before, that would be better than how I felt that, that for those few, it was a few days. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that was. That's really bad. So what, what did you do to go back to the doctors? So I called the doctor and I said to them um, exactly how I was feeling that I knew it was the HRT. It wasn't a depression type feeling. It was more sort of instant. It felt completely different. And their response to that was um, antidepressants, which just absolutely enraged me because I knew I've been there, I've, I've, I've been in that situation and there is a place for antidepressants. Yeah. There, there absolutely is. Um, but this wasn't the time and place for it. It was the HRT and, and, and what was going on at that point in time. And I had to fight to make sure that they didn't put me on antidepressant, that they changed my HRT. And when I got that change within three days, I was fine. And, and that's, that's so scary, isn't it? And the fact that that, that is such a, a misdiagnosis almost, you know, and where would that have left you? Well, there's, I have a family member who has been dealing with depression and early menopause, and it actually worries me how many women are out there taking antidepressants that don't need them. They need a change of either HRT, need to be put on it, need, to, need it to be changed, and they're being medically, um, they're given more medicine to treat something medical. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's scary. It is, isn't it? I mean, I know, I know from you know experience with family members as well. You know, antidepressants tend to numb feelings, so you probably wouldn't be as enraged or as in um, sort of in inspired to fight for your corner like you were. So I think that's a really key message, isn't it? If you know your own body, yes. stand your ground, especially. And I guess. With some of the symptoms of menopause and, you know, anxiety and that, that lack of confidence, I guess that could be really difficult for some people to do in that situation. Yeah, I think if it had been a year, like a year ago, like when COVID hit, my life changed and when my mum passed away and I lost my dog. So yeah. it, I, I had two choices. I could, I could you know... <sighs> I could go down with them or I can come out fighting and my choice was to fight and since then I've, I've surrounded myself with groups of really strong women and that's what's pulled me through and I think that's what gave me the strength to yeah. to, to fight for myself and to, to recognize myself whereas before I'd have just have gone yeah that's fine if that's what you think I should have and that's what I'll have and god knows where I would have been. Yeah. So has that actually been quite empowering for you then to, to know that you, you took that stand and that you're starting to feel better? I know it's still not quite right for you, but. Yeah, I feel like I've got my own voice now, but I get it. It's come from tragedy. It's not, yeah. you know, not from anything easy. Um, and like I said, I had a choice at that point and, and I chose to fight, you know, for a little and. Um, you know I, I wasn't going to go down with the ship so to speak yeah. so you know at least I feel like I've got that empowerment now to speak Good. to myself and that getting the message from from the documentary that Davina did just understanding that the GPs haven't not always have a clue what mm -hmm. they're doing and as I've looked over my medical records um in terms of who I've been speaking to for my for my medication I speak to the menopause nurse practitioner. I haven't got a clue. That's that's really quite scary, isn't it? <laughs> so, I, I mean, and, and that, you know, is a really important message that you've given there. But I think there's a couple of other things that I, I'd really love to understand from you. Obviously, you, you run your own business, which is which is amazing. And, and having that, your young daughter, I mean, how old is she now? She's two and a half. Two and a half, which, I mean, it's a challenging time when you're, like, in your 20s. But <laughs> when we're getting older, I know I couldn't do it now at 45. It would be, uh, it'd be a shock to the system. But has that, do you feel that going through all this has impacted your, um, your experience as a mother? I think there was, 
I don't know because I don't know what I would have been like as a mother yeah. uh, younger you know I don't have that experience to to go off of um there, there's a level of disconnect in terms of worry of loss and mm. um, you know I, I, you know t- terrified all the way through the pregnancy and I'm having her in terms of loss um and I think that does have an impact yeah. Um, whereas if I hadn't have been through all of that, would I have just been a carefree, loving, you know, mother that just, you know, I, I gave her a lot of freedom and, yeah. and and she, you know, I don't stand over her. I don't I don't overly protect her. Maybe I do, of course. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't want to. I've seen so many people go through that scenario and end up with horrendous postnatal depression because they've wanted this for so long. Um, and it comes along and it's not the bells and whistles and the happiness and, and all this stuff. It, it's exhausting. Yeah. Um, but I've been on a journey over the last, especially the last year of just getting better myself, body, mind. You know, I want to be an active mum. And at 42, I, I can do that. I'm not old. Yeah, you can. <laughs> so I think I'm more patient um, with being a bit older um, and I'm learning from so many people at the moment just to I'm excited to see what I can teach her in terms of being who she wants to be and, and not being restricted through life so Excellent. she'll have a she'll have a different lifestyle being with me being older I think. oh no I think it's wonderful you're doing a great job and we on the business side of things have you found that going through early menopause and any of your symptoms have have caused that to be a challenge um no I think I've been massively lucky in terms of even though I didn't there's probably been a load of symptoms in my 30s that I was never aware of didn't understand what was going on um just rode the waves of whatever was going on but I didn't have a lot of like hot flushes by the time hot flushes and things started I was aware I was I'd been through the IVF and I was sort of starting to become aware of uh, of the symptoms and stuff of menopause not all of them some of them are brand new to me today that I've been finding out so even still you know it's learning but um I think it just sort of cracked on with life with whatever was thrown at me um I was I'm in a good relationship so I think it, you know it wasn't I wasn't struggling against the the, the tide and of, of life and everything has yeah. been quite good in, in that sort of terms but um, at least I knew then once the um, hot flushes came, I knew, you know, what was happening. Yeah. And as sort of almost as quickly as they came, they went. Right. OK. So it, it, literally I suffered with them a couple of months and yeah. it was gone. So it, in terms of symptoms, I've had very little, uh, but I don't know if that's because as of arisen, um, I've managed to deal with it with the doctors and, and stand my ground and get help yeah. and support. Yeah, I think just from talking to so many women that I have been doing through this campaign, everybody's experience is so different. And that in itself is a challenge. And I think, as, as you've pointed out, it's if we educate ourselves as women around what this can be, it puts us in a much stronger position to be able to say to the medical profession, I know what is happening to my body and I know that this is what I need Um, and and you can understand that to a degree can't you as if every woman's symptoms or experience is completely different it must actually be quite difficult for the doctors to know and to diagnose so um, but I think if we can raise awareness amongst women that's really really important and not just amongst women amongst all people actually because you know the more informed that men are as well the better place they are to support us both at home and in the workplace absolutely so, yeah it's given them the power to ask questions and be okay with that and look at the information I think um like a lot of things that are going on in the world I think people shy away from it when they don't understand it um but if we can give the put the information out there it helps them um understand it a little bit more as well absolutely and that's exactly what we're trying to do with switch it up so thank you so much for sharing your story i know it's really painful in part so i really appreciate no, your sort of open and honesty and um and, and thank you again thank you for having me